Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up and connect MongoDB Atlas with Java. So MongoDB Atlas is actually MongoDB's cloud NoSQL database. So this is a database that will exist on the cloud that we will be talking to from a local Java application. Now this Java application is going to be a purely simple, pure Java command line application. So this is not an Android tutorial, please be warned. So this is not how to use MongoDB with your Android apps that you are coding in Java. Nor, nor is this actually a tutorial using Spring Boot with MongoDB. So this is just plain and simple Java. So in this tutorial, we're going to follow the steps to setting up a database using MongoDB Atlas, how to create an account, create a cluster, connect to this database and all those things. And also we're going to verify that our connection with Java is solid by using a simple write operation that we're going to do to just write a simple document to this database and just check whether our connection is solid. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. So here in front of me, you have this website for MongoDB. So this is mongodb.com slash cloud. I will be linking everything in the description below. So here you can see the different uh, products and features that MongoDB provides using the cloud. So here you have MongoDB Atlas. It's the cloud database for modern applications. And this is what we will be using. There are different other variations and products. So Atlas search, which is this um, text search that you can have on top of your database that makes it easy to search through the text inside your database, as well as other different applications and features. So Realm database is a sort of collaboration between MongoDB and Realm that you can use for your mobile, mobile, mobile applications, you could say. Anyways, so this is really what we're going to use, which is MongoDB Atlas. Now here you have the MongoDB Atlas documentation. So feel free to refer to this if you're learning Atlas from scratch. Now, I really do hope to be able to create a tutorial learning Atlas from scratch and using it with Java as well. However, for this tutorial, this is a setup and connection tutorial purely. So this is only focused on how to set up the Atlas um, database as well as how to connect it with Java and making sure that this connection is functional. All right. So here you have the documentation. It's also going to be linked down below. All right, so we go here and this is cloud slash Atlas. And this is where you can actually start by signing in and creating an Atlas database. So also this will be linked down below. And here you can go to sign in to sign in with your Google account. So you can actually use your Gmail account to sign in and this will maybe enable you to sign in much faster or you can create an account using your email and password. So once you've created an account, you will actually be faced with this page. So after you create your account and accept the terms of services, this is the first thing that you're going to see. So I'm using my YouTube account for this. So this account has no um, MongoDB Atlas account before. So this is completely new. I actually have used MongoDB Atlas, but with my personal and work emails and not my YouTube email. So this is a purely set up tutorial. You can see exactly how it will be if you're using Atlas for the first time. So here you're just going to give a name for your organization. So I'm just going to call this code first. Um, excuse me, I have caps lock, so code first. And now you have this project name right here. So let's just call this sample project. All right. And then it will ask you, what is your preferred language? This is mainly so that they can show you different tips and code samples, and they really want to show you it in a language that you know. So now we're just going to select Java, but you can also select Python or any other language that you're using. Next, we're going to click continue and move on to the next page. All right. So now we have to choose the type of database that we want. So what we want is we're going to choose the free tier, mainly because this is enough for a beginner. And this is the sort of most basic tier that we have. And this tutorial is just for educational purposes only, not for commercial purposes. So now we have to choose a cloud provider and a region. So I'm just going to go with the default settings that were chosen by MongoDB. So we're going to use AWS and it's going to be the US East one. So I'm not going to change any of these things. I'm just going to click create cluster. So now we are setting up our MongoDB Atlas. And if this is your first time, do not worry. These are all natural steps. When you are setting up your account, it may appear a bit confusing, like there's too much going on. But if you really do not want to bother with all the different um, settings that you can change and you're only using MongoDB for, let's say, a small personal project, then just choose the default settings and you are good to go. 
So the cluster is being created. Now we have to just maybe wait for one to three minutes while they are creating the cluster. And then I will see you in a second. So the cluster has been created, the server has been started, and now we can begin using it. So again, this is a database that will exist on the cloud. Now, if you've been on my channel before, you know that I have created a getting started with MongoDB playlist in which I used both MongoDB shell and MongoDB compass to sort of work with a local database. And I covered all the different components of a CRUD application. And then it was really a beginner's tutorial. So I will be linking that down below in case you wish to see it. All right, moving on. So this is our new database. You can, uh, sorry, our new cluster. You can go to the cluster to check the overview, and then you can see that this is a shared cluster and so on. So what else do we want to do? We want to see our collections. So the collections is where the database will be. So a database in MongoDB is composed of collections and these collections have documents. You can think of it like how a database in SQL is composed of, or let's say a relational database to be accurate, is composed of tables and these tables have rows. This is a bit similar. Now this analogy is not 100%, but this is actually how it works. So there are collections and these collections have documents. More on that will be explained in different tutorials. Again, you can view my older tutorials. You can also view a tutorial I have or an explanation video I have for NoSQL, which will also be linked down below. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our own data. We're going to create a sample database and I'm going to call this sample DB and then the collection will be sample collection. All right. And now I am going to create these. So once that's done, so I have a database now and this database has an empty collection. Once that's done, I'm going to be checking the database access. So what is the database access for? This is for you to create users who will be, who will have permissions. They will be reading and writing to this database. So obviously you as an admin, you need an admin user. So we're going to create a new user and then we're just going to give it a name. So let's say test user. So let's say for example, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is not the most secure of passwords, but we're going to roll with it just for the sake of example. All right. And now I just have to change the different privileges for this user. So let's say I'm going to make this user a Atlas admin. So this person is an admin of this cloud database. And now I'm just going to click add user. So now my test user exists in the database access section, and I can use this user to access my database from the Java command line, which is what we're going to be doing, and then read and write to this database accordingly. So let's go back here to the database. And now again, we have, this is our cluster and we can browse the collections. So here we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to Java and see how we're going to connect to this Atlas database from there. So I have the IntelliJ IDE open. This is a very basic Java tutorial, no frameworks, no add-ons, nothing. So this is just a simple Java class, a main.java file, and there is really nothing. So it's a class with a main method. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually going to add Maven support to this project. So in this tutorial, we're going to be seeing how to connect to MongoDB using Maven. Now you can also do this using the Gradle. However, in this tutorial, we're using Maven. I can do another video where I show you how to do it using Gradle. However, that is pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to right click on my project and then I'm going to add framework support and I'm going to make sure to add Maven support. So here we go. All right. So now I can maybe leave this group ID however, however I like. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the dependencies because this is where I'll be adding my MongoDB dependency. And then I'm going to paste this. So this is the dependency I've just added. This dependency is the MongoDB driver sync, which contains the driver for Java for MongoDB. And the version we're using is 4.0.5. So I will be pasting this in the description below if you just want to copy paste it from there. However, they may, there may be newer drivers as you go on. So maybe this video will at one point be very old and will exist on my channel for a long time. So be sure to do your own research and check out the version that you want. All right. So now that I've added the dependency, all I have to do is import the changes from Maven. All right. So now I've added the MongoDB dependency, which means I can actually start coding. So the first thing I actually want to do is I want to connect to my database, right? So this is 
intuitively this is our first step so i'm just going to erase this and then i'm going to start coding so the class that i want to use is the mongo client so this mongo client is what will enable us to talk to the database that is on the cloud so the mongo client and i will give it the name the variable name client and then mongo client dot create so here what you need to do is you need to pass a string all right so i'm just going to hover um, yeah, all right, so this is actually Mongo clients. My bad, please excuse me, and I'm going to import Mongo clients as well. So here I'm going to be passing a string. So this string will be the connection string to this MongoDB database. So now I'm just going to go back here to my Atlas. I'm going to go back here to overview, and I'm going to click on connect. So this will open up a bunch of new things. So here you can add your current IP address, you can add a different IP address, or you can allow access from anywhere. So I will be using this because mainly this is a purely like for educational purposes tutorial and it's just an example. So of course, in your case, in your personal projects or your commercial purposes, you may have different settings here. So I don't need to create a database user because we already did that when we used the database access functionality here. Next, I'm, I'm going to choose a connection method and what I want to do is I want to connect my application. So you can connect with the MongoDB shell, you can connect with the compass, which is the user interface way um, to access your data and visualize it more clearly. This is the command line way, but we're going to use application since we're connecting it with a driver. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this connection string and then we're going to close this. So we go back here and we pass this string to this create function. All right. So now we have this test user and the password here is something that you need to change. So if you do leave this here, you will obviously have an error because you will not be able to connect to your database because you don't have your real password. So what you need to do is you erase this, you make sure you erase the different brackets and you write down your real password. So we specified the password to be something very simple and ridiculous, but this is our password. So now I have the connection to the Mongo client and I've passed the connection string. All right. So next, what I want to do is that I want to be able to access the database that I created. So I created a database and a collection and this collection is still empty. So there are no documents at the moment. So how do I actually access this database? I go back here and I use the Mongo database class and I create DB and then I use the client to use the get database function. And now I pass the database name. Now, had I not created this database already in the Atlas website, what you can do in this case is actually just use the same line of code and it will create this database for you. Now, next, what we are going to do is we are going to say Mongo collection. All right. And then we're going to name it, let's say something like Cole. And what we're going to do is we're going to use db.getCollection and pass the collection name. So now I can access both my database and my collection. Now what I want to do is basically, I want to insert a document to this collection. So again, I'm doing this just for the sake to check that my connection is completely working. Now, before I do that, actually, I'm going to press run just to make sure that everything is working great. So. I just press run and actually I got this error. So this error is actually quite common when you're using Maven. So what you can do is you just go, you find action, Java compiler, there you go. And then you, um, here you go. So here you change the target bytecode version to nine. So now you can run this again and you should get it with no errors. All right, so we have actually no errors. This is just a warning that we have and everything seems to be working fine. So now, as I said, I want to insert a document. So I use the document class. So this document class is actually not the javax.swing.text one, but it is the org.bson. So bson is basically the type of documents that we use in MongoDB. More on that later, hopefully in a different tutorial, or you can see this in my older local MongoDB tutorials. So bson documents are very similar to JSON documents, but this is what MongoDB uses. So we just call this sample doc, and now I create a new document. All right, and this document will work basically like a map. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically map the ID to something like one, all right? 
And then I'm going to append different fields and their values in for, for this specific document. So I can say the name is John Smith. So this is just a simple example. And now all I need to do is I refer to my column, so call dot insert one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert sample doc. And that's really it. So now I just have to press run. So after running, we now have this sample collection in the sample DB. This so after running, our sample collection in our sample database now contains one document, and this document has an ID of one and a name of John Smith, just like how we used it in the sample document that we created using Java.